real data often contain missing values and outline observations. So this week we'll start by learning how to address some common issues with time series data, particularly handling missing data. Later on, you'll learn how to change the frequency of time series, downsampling or upsampling, and smoothing techniques. Since time series data measurements are conducted several times with different conditions, sometimes missing data occur due to several problems that are known as a missingness mechanism. There are three main types of missing data. Missing completely at random, MCR. A variable is missing completely at random if the probability of missingness is the same for all units. In other words, there is no dependencies of the missingness probability related to the variable itself. And if you look at the formula, we have P missing given complete data is equal probability of missing data. One example would be sensor recording failure. The second type is missing at random, MAR. A variable is missing at random if the probability of missingness is depending only on available information. In the income survey, for instance, male respondents tend to skip answers about their salary. Let's look at the formula. We have probability of missing data given complete data equal probability of missing data given observed data. And the third type is missing not at random, MNAR. The missingness probability is depending on the variable itself. And typically, incomplete data here cannot be verified or predicted. Look at the following example. You have an incomplete table with IQ scores. Can you predict or verify those IQ scores? The missing scores might be low IQ or high IQ, but you do not have a mechanism to verify. And the formula here is probability of missing data given complete data, which is not equal as probability of missing given observed data. Many analysis methods require missing values to be replaced with reasonable values up front. In statistics, this process of replacing missing values is called imputation. Several methods have been introduced to solve those missing values according to its missing mechanism. The most common methods Imputation, when we fill in missing data based on observation about the entire data set. Interpolation, when we use neighboring data points to estimate the missing value. Interpolation can also be a form of imputation. And finally, deletion of affected time periods, when we choose not to use time periods that have missing data at all. And since time series data has temporal property, only some of the statistical methodology are appropriate for time series data. It is useful for us to first classify the types of time series data based on their decomposition. Recall from the last week. Here is our equation with M as a trans, S as seasonality, and epsilon as an error term. Based on the decomposition, we have four scenarios. One with no trends, and no seasonality. Do you notice in the figure one, it's an example of white noise. Two, we have trends, but no seasonality. And figure two allows us to observe a steady upward increase. Three, we have no trends. And figure three shows us exactly the oscillation of data in the form of waves. And four, we have both trends and seasonality. And in, in figure four, we can observe that data points are increasing, but also continue to fluctuate. Let's look at the Impute TS package, which specializes on univariate time series imputation, and it offers multiple imputation algorithm and also plotting function for time series missing data statistics. So as a whole, the package aims to support us in the complete process of replacing missing value in time series. As an example, we're going to look at TS air gap time series, the figure on the right top. The data represent the monthly totals of international airline passengers from 1949 to 1960. And obviously in that figure, you can notice some missing 
values. It's a good practice to always start analyzing distribution of the missing value, and we can use stats function. This function includes overall percentage of missing data, number of missing values, length of time series. Here we have length 144, number of missing values 13, percentage of missing value 9%. It has some other interesting statistical description. Feel free to look at the function and apply to your data. A plot na that distribution is a function that visualizes the distribution of NAs in the time series. And this is done using a standard time series plot where area with missing data color red. And if you count those red lines, you notice we have 13 missing values. An overview with all available imputation algorithm can be found in the package description. And today we just cover NA mean, NA LOCF, and you can look later at other functions. First, we'll start with NA mean, which includes mean imputation, median, and mode imputation. This function calculates the mean over all the known NA value and replaces all NAs with this value. You notice option we selected mean, and NA mean has two parameters to include the data set and option. The visual inspection is provided by plot NA imputation function. And in the figure, the bottom right, you notice the imputed values are marked in red, and they do not fit very well the data set TS air gap. The green are real values, as we have also a complete data set to compare, and the blue is known values. You notice also our data has a strong trend upward. This plotting function allows us to quickly detect that we have problem here if we use mean function, as those red dots are quite far apart from the observed value. We can use the same imputation function and just add option mode or median. Note that imputed values marked in red are a bit closer to the observed values, but they still do not fit well. And typically, mean imputation, median, and mode would be used for data set that has no trend, no seasonality, or time loss. Time series methods for data with trends include the following methods. Last observation carried forward, LOCF, next observation carried backwards, NOCB, and linear interpolation, where a linear relation is assumed between two points. And interpolation can be done by looking at both past and future data. So we're using non-missing value from adjacent points to compute values for missing data. Note that these methods rely on the assumption that adjacent observations are similar to one another. And this method do not work well when the assumption is not valid, so please check your data if you have presence of strong seasonality. Here we're going to plot the differences between data points imputed and the actual data points so that you can see the difference between three methods and how well they do. First, for last observation carried forward, then NOCB, next observation carried forward, and finally for linear interpolation. You notice the function that we use for the first two methods is NALOCF by adding an option for last observation or next observation. For linear interpolation, we use another function, NA interpolation, and we're providing option linear. So let's look at those three differences. Can you notice a difference between them? It looks like linear method seems to work and fit better than other methods. Also, let's look at mean squared error table to get a better idea of how well all those methods work. So we have LOCF, NACB, linear, mode, median, and mean, and you notice linear has the smallest MSE value, and the highest one is actually given by mode. So let's review a very important statement. So when we have time series data with trends, we would use LOCF 
NOCB or linear interpolation. When we have time series without trends in seasonality, we can use mean imputation. But what can we do when we have a strong seasonality? So for strong seasonality, we actually first perform a seasonal adjustment, then apply one of the methods described earlier here. Don't worry about seasonal adjustments this week, we'll learn it in the following next week.